I have reviewed over a dozen dash cameras now and many of them were very good. But can a $50 camera offer a great user experience and video quality? This GQU D200 claims 2.5K resolution and an easy to use phone app all in a very discreet, small package. Let's check it out. So it's going to be a pretty small camera as we can see right here, which I do like a lot. You don't want it to be blocking your view or things like that. Uh, let's see, on this side here we have a 2K resolution, so I'm not exactly sure if it's going to be 2K or 2.5K. I'll definitely let you know by the end of the video, but the difference is basically between 1440p and 1600p, so there might be some difference, maybe there's a firmware update. It also has 170 degree field of view, so that should help it capture more on the sides of the car. Also has loop recording, so it will record over the older footage once it reaches uh, capacity on the micro SD card. Of course, if you have uh, an accident or something like that, it will not record over that footage since it has a G sensor that will mark that footage uh, to be stored elsewhere and not deleted. We also have a parking mode, but you do need a hardwire kit for this. Wi-Fi, yes, since it doesn't have a screen, I believe, so we do need to use a Wi-Fi connection and an app to control it and uh, set it up basically and a hidden design so yeah just a discrete design that we can see here let's open it up all right so what do we have here so of course the camera comes with a power adapter this is a 12 volt to 24 volt so you can use it on any of the voltages and it is a 2 amp uh, power output it uses a mini usb for the power take out the camera itself all right, so yeah, pretty small camera right there. Let's check out the lens. Looks pretty good. I do believe it's using actually glass lenses, so that should help it uh, capture pretty good footage. We have a microphone here on the front. On the right side, we have the micro SD card slot and the mini USB uh, port. Nothing on the back. Well, looks like there's an LED on the back, so it'll tell us when the camera is recording and things like that. Looks like a reset button here at the top and a power button on the left. Not much more to it, so yeah, pretty cool. Very simple design, should go under the rear view mirror very easily. This is adjustable up and down, does not look like it's adjustable side to side, so you have to be careful when you actually put it in the vehicle to make sure it's in the correct position. Let's see what else is in the box. We have a replacement 3M adhesive, a warranty card. It also has this electrostatic film included, which I really like. This allows you to stick this to the glass and then stick the adhesive to the plastic so you won't damage your windshield or whatever else you choose to stick this to. Pretty cool idea and I do like when uh, companies include this. They probably cost them nothing, but very nice and easy to actually swap cameras into a different uh, car if you want to. And we have a user manual that tells you how to put this D card in, how to properly install it, and where to download the app, and yeah, just a few other uh, items that might be helpful, like this. these specifications are here. So it has Wi-Fi, microphone, G sensor, loop recording, and Store, supported storage and the working temperature but anyway i'm excited to see what the footage is going to look like from this camera so i'm going to grab one of my own micro sd cards as it's not included with the camera install this in a car and see what kind of quality we can get let's do it installing this dash cam in the car couldn't be easier as all you have to do is stick the camera onto the plastic film and route the power wire to it with a formatted micro SD card inserted, it's all set up and ready to use. But if you'd like to change some settings, you may want to download the app and connect to the camera. This is intuitive as well. Connect to the camera's Wi-Fi, open the app and connect to the dash cam. Here you will be able to view live footage that is being recorded, take a snapshot, download previous footage, or change settings. Footage takes about 30 seconds to download for each minute of video, which is not bad at all. Back to the settings, there are a few things you can change here as well, such as the resolution. It comes defaulted to 2K or 1440p, but I switched mine to 1600p, which is 2.5K. After importing the footage into my video editing software, I can confirm that this indeed does record at 2560 by 1600 
at 30 frames per second, which answers my question from earlier about the resolution. Some of the other notable settings you can change here is enabling or disabling audio recording, changing the speaker volume and enabling high dynamic mode. Now that we are done with the settings, what does the footage actually look like? Both day and night footage I have here was in the rain on a very cloudy and dark day, but I think the camera has handled it acceptably. The footage may not be super crisp, but it is smooth and I believe that it's actually 30 frames per second. And for a $50 camera, I'm very happy with the results. We can see that the WDR is doing its job and it helps separate the brighter sky from the darker roads and trees. Nothing seems to be washed out and we get a good wide view of the road. Before we check out the night footage, let's see how good the microphone is on this dash cam. What does it sound like? Well, let's see. We're going about 55 miles an hour in an electric BMW i3. So let's see how it deals with the lack of noise from the engine, but also some wind noise. Getting a good video at night can be extremely difficult. You can try this yourself with your very expensive phone and see how well that turns out. But this GQU D200 manages to provide some useful footage even on a rainy and dark evening. It's not perfect by any means, but you can make out street names and license plates if you are close enough. The darker it gets, the grainier the footage, but overall it's not bad for the price. There are a few things that I think could be improved though. This dash camera does not have GPS built in, so you do not have speed or location available, which can be helpful in some situations. And as always, I wish they included a micro SD card so that you can start using it right away out of the box. So would I recommend this camera? I think it would work well for anyone who is looking for a very inexpensive but comprehensive dash cam that can deliver easy setup, an app that does what you need it to do, and video quality that of a camera twice the price. If you like this video, why not check out this helpful video from my channel that just popped up for you. Thank you so much for watching and I'll see you in the next one.